touching my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you And you open my eyes to your wonders and you Capture my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you
Hi, uh, here we are again and we are thinking about our new sermon series and we want to talk to you about uh, growing up in the faith and forming uh, a really robust faith. Uh, as, as a church uh, and as pastors, our heart for every single person in the church is that they form a really robust faith and belief in God. Christian means being a mini Christ, being a disciple that really grows and thrives in their following of Jesus and particularly at the moment in the bizarrest and hardest of circumstances what we want to do is equip every single person so that they're not just uh, surviving, they're not just kind of limping from one day to another but they're really thriving as Christians and as people in the community and in the places that they find themselves. Being a healthy, thriving Christian has never been more important than it is this year. And if we think about it, many of our kind of normal routines, many of the things that we consider just everyday and normal have changed or have been stripped away and many of those things that we normally lean into that can give us routine and give us security have changed or altered in some way and that can be really really unsettling and so we want to help every single person including ourselves develop a faith that is robust that is resilient 
that's able to withstand whatever life throws at us. And so our heart for this sermon series is to give people uh, really easy to understand and easy to remember takeaway bits of wisdom that every single person can apply and live in their every day to help every single person become resilient, healthy, thriving, effective Christians. And the things we're going to look at, they're not rocket science. They're not deeply uh, theologically hard to, to wrestle and understand. They are simple, they are straightforward, sensible, biblical, practical ways to upgrade your faith. So hopefully every single person, including me, can take these on board and apply them and remember them in the everyday. So this morning I just want to talk about the obvious. Let's start with the obvious. And the thing I want to talk about is the Holy Spirit. So every morning when you wake up, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you afresh every single morning. I just want to read from the Gospel of John. This is chapter 14 and this is uh, Jesus speaking and comforting his disciples but also promising the Holy Spirit. So this is chapter 14 and verse 16, Jesus speaking here. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever called the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him but you know him for he lives with you and he will be in you that's a promise from Jesus a promise that in our every day we have a helper we have a helper that lives with us and lives within us a helper that can guide us that can comfort us that will remind us that actually we're never alone. We have someone with us the whole time. And because of that, we are never helpless. We're never without help. We have someone we can call on the whole time. A few years ago, the guy that started and ran uh, Soul Survivor, many, uh, many of our young people, uh, have been to Soul Survivor, but Mike Pilavachi, who is a really wonderful guy, uh, but incredibly down to earth, he was preaching and he said, you know, to live the Christian life, it's not just hard, it's not just difficult, it's completely impossible. But he then paused and people were thinking, well, that's not very encouraging. But he then went on to talk about that the life that Jesus calls us to, and he calls us to life in all of its fullness, that life as a disciple of Jesus is only possible through the Holy Spirit. It's only possible with the help of the Holy Spirit. Have you ever had a moment, a season in your life where you feel really just dry, just really stale you just feel like God's abandoned you you're just like God where are you or you just feel that things have just got on top of you or you feel just feel overwhelmed it might just be me but is it possible in those situations that maybe at the start of that day or at the start of that season you forgot who your helper was and you try to do it in your own strength if we try and live the Christian life, if we try and live through life in our own strength, we might be able to do it for a time. We might be really organised, we might be massively capable, but over a period of time, it's hard to keep that going without help. Jesus promises us the helper, the Holy Spirit. You know, this Christianity stuff um, is a long term thing. It's a lifelong journey. And it's very, very hard to do it 
without help. Jesus knew that and he told his disciples and he promises us that there is help for us. It's the Holy Spirit and we just have to ask him. We just have to ask the Holy Spirit, come and help me. Please come and help me. Our daughter, Millie, when she first went to, to New Wine, which is a big uh, summer festival, she was in one of her first children's groups and she must have been maybe three, four years old. And they taught the children, even as young as they were, to pray. And the first prayer that she ever learnt was to just sit still, hold out her hands and say, Holy Spirit, help me. That was her first prayer. That served her pretty well. And a couple of years later, she had just started school and she was, uh, she found a little friend and they were having a lovely time at lunchtime. Uh, and because she was settled in school and really happy, um, Dave and I actually had a lunch uh, appointment with a couple. And so we were about an hour up the road and we had a phone call from the school and her and her little friend had been playing in the playground and the friend had said, let's see how high we can throw these stones. I'm not sure I even need to end this story. Um, and so her friend, in an effort to be the strongest, had thrown the stone really, really, really high into the air and it had fallen and hit Millie on her eye and cut the top of her eye and had swollen up like a balloon. So Dave and I are out having lunch, we're an hour up the road, the phone goes and it's the receptionist at the school. I'm, I'm afraid to say your daughter's had a little accident. And obviously the mummy in me was really panicking, is it really serious, you know? So the receptionist explained what had happened and I said, well, we're actually an hour away, um, so even if we left right this second, we, we wouldn't be able to get there. So I said, is Millie there? And because she was so little, she was sitting on the receptionist's lap, and I said, is it possible to speak to Millie? And Millie came on the phone, and I could hear this little voice. <laughs> so I started to talk to her, and because she recognised my voice, she started to slightly calm down, but I said to her, Millie, what can you do? What can you do? I said, do you, can you say a prayer? And she said, oh, Holy Spirit, help me. And, you know, with, a, with that prayer, but also obviously with some mummy coaxing, she calmed down. And then she stayed at school and I, we picked her up as normal. Now, some of you might be hearing that absolutely shocked, thinking, what a terrible mum. Uh, but she knew in that moment she knew that she needed to call on her helper. She was really small, but she knew to call for Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me. Um, after that, she and her friend didn't throw any more stones in the air, I'm happy to report. It's a simple, simple prayer. If you look at the book of Acts, we see that the Holy Spirit fills the disciples uh, and it's not just a one-off. I remember I went to a conference a few years ago and someone said, you know what, we get filled with the Holy Spirit, but because we're human, because we're flawed, we leak. We need more than one filling. We need to be constantly filled with the Holy Spirit. And in, in the book of Acts, we see the disciples, we see the followers of Jesus being filled multiple times by the Holy Spirit. And we also see quite often that when someone is filled with the Holy Spirit, they are, there's then something amazing happening, maybe a supernatural action or event, because they have the power of God in them. And when I talk to people about being filled with the Holy Spirit, sometimes it's just an amazing thing to remember that the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the grave is the same Holy Spirit that lives in you. That's the power we carry around with us when we say, Holy Spirit, help me. 
you know, life is so much more exciting when we partner with the Holy Spirit. And we just have to remember to include the Holy Spirit in our lives. So really, really practically, what do we need to do? Like my daughter, we just need to say, Holy Spirit, help me. The easiest prayer to remember, but the most effective, the most powerful. Just on a really uh, practical tip, because this is what we want to do, practical, accessible, memorable tips that will help you on a daily basis to become a robust, thriving Christian. In the same way that you might get up in the morning, and for me it's to put on the coffee, or before we leave the house, you know, you're going to lock the back door, or you're going to clean your teeth, or any of those routine things that you do every single day without even thinking. Begin to form a habit where when you wake up, just take 30 seconds or a minute and ask God to fill you afresh with the Holy Spirit. Ask him to help you for all the things that are going to happen during the day that you know you need help with so that you can live the life that he has called you to. And for some of us at the moment, going into maybe our work situations, that is incredibly difficult. It's incredibly hard. It's challenging. It's scary. We might be going on uh, a journey that we don't want to do. We might be going into a difficult work situation. We might be having a day coming up that we're worried about facing. But if we start the day knowing that we're going to partner with the Holy Spirit, that we have our helper right with us and right within us, he will help us every step of the way. So I'm just going to pray. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to remember you in our every day, in our every waking moment, that we would know that we carry the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to partner with you so that we can do the things you want us to do. We can thrive as a follower of you. We can live the life that you have called us to live and carved out for us. Holy Spirit, help us. Thank you, God. So that's the first thing that we're going to put into practice as we build our robust, thriving faith. There we go. Put that one into practice and there's more in the next sermon. Bless you guys.